Brooklyn Independent Television. Chef Moshe Wendell and his wife Shayna opened Pardis on Atlantic Avenue, a restaurant specializing in Mediterranean kosher cuisine. The menu changes often, and fresh meats and vegetables are served up in unexpected ways. My name is Moshe Wendell, and I'm a cook. We're at Pardis Restaurant. It's a restaurant that I opened my wife uh, two years ago. We're a glut kosher, progressive French restaurant. We've been in the business together for um, a long time. Um, me in the front of the house, my husband in the back of the house. There wasn't any kosher restaurants where he could really express himself. We just really had to do it ourselves. I didn't plan on being in the restaurant business um, in the beginning. It was the only way it was going to work, and, and it works. Glatt kosher is uh, it's the kind of kosher that we are. We're like at a pretty high level of, of, of kosher standard, which is pretty much acceptable to everybody. And as far as the food, we cook food with forward-thinking French technique, using seasonal ingredients. But we try and have fun with it too. It's not like a stuffy place. This is more of a casual, casual atmosphere. Today we're at Pardes, and we'll be making tuna tartare. Now, we're ready to get started. What do we do first? First, we're gonna start with beautiful fresh tuna that we got today, okay. some beautiful fresh watermelon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be tossing it with some mint and some basil. Um, a little bit of a vinaigrette that we make here from uh, Meyer lemon, mm -hmm. coconut milk, a little bit of mayonnaise, um, some mustard and some vanilla. We're gonna toss it with some coarse salt. And we're also gonna use in the plate uh, a puree of avocado, some bonito that we've cured ourselves in house, which we kind of cure and smoke. We're gonna finish it with a, uh, a watermelon granita. Sounds good. So we're just gonna dress the tuna and the watermelon with this, a little okay. bit in each one, a tiny bit, not too much. Got it? All right, just a little bit. Tell me about that avocado. Oh, so, so the avocado puree, it's coconut milk, basil, mm -hmm. and a little bit of um, sugar and salt, a little bit of oil. Now okay. we're gonna mix it. So we're gonna put a little bit of coarse salt in here. Okay. All right. Gonna... It looks delicious already. So we start with the ring mold here. You're gonna okay. tip the watermelon first. So now we're just gonna pack it down a little bit. Okay. All cool. right. All right. So now we're gonna load our tuna. Yep, all right. All right, now we're gonna load it in here like this. Okay. All right. All right, now we're gonna move our ring mold over here. Okay. All right, and now you're gonna do the same thing over again, okay? Okay, okay. all right, now we're just gonna do some really nice, beautiful dollops of this avocado puree on here. Okay, we're doing a dollop. That's it, uh, that's it, all right, enough. Ah. Thank the good Lord. Okay. All right, now uh, we're gonna do some of this uh, bonito here that we have. Right. All right, you see it very thin. All right, now and you can kind of grab some too. We've got this watermelon granita, watermelon with uh, some sugar and citrus in it. Sounds delicious. All right, so now we're just gonna take some random chunks. Okay, there you have it, tuna tartare. My husband and I, we met um, at a bar in Philadelphia. It was love at first sight. Been together ever since. So, even working together, the relationship just gets better and better, so. Orthodox Jewish law says you have to be apart like the week before the wedding. So we actually became like religious together, everything. This really big, long kind of path we traveled together. But we really were never apart until then, the week before our wedding. So we always just really clicked and that was it. Slowly we figured out, you know, we weren't going to be able to, you know, be kosher and have him be, um, stay in the business. Just not a lot of the hall for kosher restaurants in Philadelphia. We'd open this place the idea of doing more steak and burger kind of place. And then slowly but surely the the demand for the more interesting stuff kind of took over. My husband particularly enjoys one of their staples. He loves their braised beef bacon club. And um, I tried the beef cheek pizza for the first time last time we were here, and I loved it. So it kind of created a quirky restaurant that we have, like a big hamburger that we serve that people are into, and a beef cheek pizza that people are into. And we also do a tasty menu that's like 12 courses, you know? And I think that's one of the pluses of a restaurant, though, is that we have the ability to, to, to kind of feed both people. This is our pastured brined uh, beef tongue. These are really beautiful uh, beef tongues that we get from our friends at Grow and Behold. Steam like basically one or so every day. And this is the end result after you steam it. Um, this one just came out. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces from both sides of the tongue. Okay. Right up in our salamander. And it's going to be like warm and crispy. We have these, our smoked egg yolks. We're also going to be using green olives, raisins that we plumped in bal uh, balsamic vinegar, some capers. Uh, and nutmeg, and on the plate we're gonna finish it with some additional olive oil. We put a little olive oil inside before we plate it. Well, some upland crest here. I'm gonna kind of assemble it all together now. So you see we have our tongue here. We've got it hot and crispy. 
This is a little uh, purple potato as well. You place the tongue on the plate nice and randomly. Take our egg, gotta make sure it's nice and loose. Potato. Got even more beautiful upland crest over here. Up next, we're gonna do a uh, roasted duck breast. We take them and we cook them very slowly in a water bath. And this one, we actually take the bone out to cook it, but there's a reason for that. What we wanna do is we wanna confit it, cure them overnight in like a salt and brown sugar mixture, and then we smoke them a couple of times, uh, and then we wrap them in a very tight plastic and aluminum sort of package. The part is we really try and, um, we do this food, it has multiple elements to the plate, but we kind of treat things simply. We try and get the opportunity to do things fresh every day unless we're making an attempt to preserve it, you know? So there's a beautiful rhubarb jam. It's just rhubarb and sugar, that's it. These are um, a savaran cake. Uh, it's basically, it's a, like a traditional dessert cake. We just lower the sugar a little, a little bit in it. And uh, instead of using all flour, uh, we use some cornmeal as well. This is the leg we use for the duck dish. We trim the ends up a little bit on it. And then we just sort of randomly place it on the plate. And then, these are sugar snack peas. Saute those with some salt, puree of mint and jalapeno. We're gonna take our duck, okay? And we're gonna kind of place a larger chunk of breast over here. And we're gonna take our peas and just sort of randomly place them. Now we've got some really nice shaped raw rhubarb here. And then we have some more beautiful micro basil we're using before. All right, that's what the finished duck looks like. And then we have our sauce that we serve with it. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.